Good morning. Today is Thursday, March the 29th, and some of you have asked to see me process food, canned food, and today I'm going to be canning up some corned beef. Um, I do my corned beef from scratch. So, as most of you know, we raise all of our um, own meat, and I had a brisket in the basement, so I brought it up, and it was last, it's been about a week and a half now, that I mixed the brine together, and it's been sitting in the refrigerator, corning away, it's been brining. So, I'll kind of show you and go through the steps here, and, um, I can't find, I have my tripod, but I can't find the thing to mount my phone to the tripod. So we're just going to do this with a selfie stick and it's going to be enjoyed by all. Okay guys, and I know this isn't going to be enjoyed by all, but oh well. I wanted to show you uh, where what I've had my uh, brisket in. I, I did trim it. Um, when we get ours from our butcher, he trims it pretty good, and there's more fat on it. Anyway, it's been soaking in this brine. In my brine, there is about two gallons of water, one cup of sugar, um, four cups of kosher salt, um, and then there, you use a pink um, curing salt, not Himalayan pink salt, not any regular salt, but it's, I think it's like the number one or a one cure salt one, something like that. And that takes two ounces. Now that stuff's important, uh, that you measure that out. And I believe the two ounces was about four teaspoons, give or take. Six cloves of garlic minced. And then four tablespoons of pickling spices. I make my own pickling spices, um, but you can buy them in the store, whatever. Then I put this all in this stainless steel pot, and guys, you wanna use stainless or a crock, um, not aluminum. But I put this in here, I had a plate on it, and it, it uh, held it down, and then put it all in the refrigerator. You take your brine, and I'm sorry, I got that backwards. You mix your brine up and let it boil and make sure the salts and sugars are all dissolved. Let it cool back down to room temperature because you do not want to cook your meat. And then when it's cool, put your meat in it. And then I put a plate on top to weight it down. Of course, I put the lid on and then I put it in the refrigerator. And like I said, it's been there for a week and a half. So now I'm going to take it out and rinse it off and I'll come back later. Okay, guys. This is part of my meat cubed up, and I'm gonna, um, I usually do it in pints, but I'm gonna do some half pints too. Those would be more like individual servings of meat. And all you do, yeah, you gotta take, use your hands. Take your hands, you do not have to add liquid, and you just, sorry I don't have a, uh, uh, tripod but I can't find the thing to hold my phone on there so you just pack that meat in there raw um, if it was regular meat you would add like um, I guess a half a teaspoon for a pint and a teaspoon for a quart but I don't I'm not going to add anything because of course that brine was really salty so I don't need to add and everything it in there as tight as you can okay I'm gonna finish packing my jars I'll probably be cutting up some more meat and then I'll come back and show you the next step okay guys I got my uh, meat packed in and I end up with one two three four five pints you get a pound of meat in a pint jar and I've got two half pints my half pints are little experiments for me. Okay, you wanna make sure that you get all of the air out. And I used to have this really cool spatula, thin spatula thing, and I've lost it. So I'm gonna be going around, getting, um, making sure there's no air, packing my meat down really tight. And I will do that. If I had a, 
if I had my thing that I could put this on the tripod, I could show you the whole process, but trying to do it one-handed. Anyway, I will come back in a bit. Okay, I have all my um, air out. I got my meat packed down. In this little cup, I have some vinegar, white vinegar. And you want to dip a paper towel or a rag in it and wipe the edges of your jar really good. Um, I, you can use, um, some use water. I like to get used vinegar, especially when I'm doing meats because it cuts the fat. Um, I don't think I mentioned when I said I had a really cool spatula. Um, not a metal spatula. You want to use plastic or wood. Sometimes I use a, um, a skewer to get the air out. I think today what I used was my plastic jar lifter handle. Okay, I've got all the lids cleaned off at the same time. I'm running my finger around the edge of the jar, make sure there's no cracks or chips. Anybody that's done any canning knows that canning can be a lot of work, but the payoff is worth every minute. I'm gonna take this leftover white vinegar and pour it into my canner. That will just help prevent um, the jars from getting that white. I can't think what it's called right now. All right, now, and they're hopefully not boiling. It doesn't matter if they are, but I'm gonna reach my finger in there. I use Tatler lids. And why do I love these Tatler lids? It's, yikes, it's hot. Let me get a fork out. Tatler lids can be used over and over and over, and the upfront cost is a bit high. Sorry guys, doing it one-handed is not easy. I apologize. Ah, dang it. Dip that back in there because I don't want to take any chances. It touched the meat and it's not going to hurt anything, but I just don't want that fat on there. Yowza. Okay, put the little rubber seal on the plastic cap. Like I said, these are Tatler lids. Kind of disappointed. I wished I'd known about these earlier. I guess they've been around since the 1970s and the company, I believe, is out of Seattle. And if I'd known about these years ago, I could have been using Tatlers. I only found out about these two or three years ago. I've used them many, many times. So far, I haven't had to buy any replacement rubber gaskets, but I'm sure that time's coming. So now I'm gonna be putting um, lids on all of them. The difference between Tatler and the metal rings, uh, metal lids, you still use a ring. You tighten it down finger tight, which I'll have to do um, when I have two hands and then you back off about a quarter of a turn. Okay, I'm gonna get the lids on all these and next step. I wanted to show you another trick that I do. I don't like to run my canner um, unless it's full. As you can see, I have space and I've already done one. And so what I'm doing, I find something to can up, but typically what I do is I can dried beans and according to whatever size I've got in there. So I've got pints, so I'm gonna do a pint of dry beans. And all I do is, into my clean jar, I wash a half a cup of dry beans into a pint. It's a half a teaspoon of salt. And to that, you just fill your jar with water. And found an old baby spoon this time. I'm gonna make sure there's no air down in there. Looks like I can add a little bit more water. So I'll top it off, put the lid on it, and put it in the canner. Okay, my canner is full. The way I did, the way I canned my meat this time, it's called raw pack. So you put it all in cold and you use cool water, or you don't use water, excuse me. Um, if I were canning it cooked, 
I would need to add some liquid to it, whether it's juices from the meat or water, whatever. A lot of times if I'm canning cooked meat, beef, or chicken, I'll use the broth. Anyway, um, I'm also trying a little experiment. I still have room for one more jar, a little half pint. So I'm going to try doing a half pint of beans. Why not? Most of my uh, canning is experiments anyway. Okay, um, I'm going to get my lid on there. And this processes for 75 minutes at 11 pounds pressure in my altitude. So I'll show you the finished product when it's done. I thought I would show you what kind of canner I have. Um, you see the black ring there? Sorry it's so close. But that is a black, uh, rubber gasket. It's shiny because I oil it so it doesn't dry out. My canner is, hmm, I think I got it in the early 80s. As long as you take care of your canners, have it tested, make sure it's safe, and when your uh, rubber gasket dries out, put in a new one, you should be good to go. I actually have an old, old, old um, All-American canner, very old, that we refurbished and put new, uh, and it seals metal on metal, and those things last forever. Many people are using their great-grandmother's um, canners from back then. You take good care of it. We put new pressure gauges on it. Works perfect. Anyway, I gotta get this going or I'm gonna be in this kitchen all day canning this meat. Well guys, I just took all this out of the canner. I don't know if you can see boiling in the jars. There's the beans. There's some of the meat. Look at all the juice that it made. That's pretty much how it is. And if you're wondering what that is in the background, I'm listening to Blind Muse live stream as I'm finishing up canning. What you need to do with these tattler lids is when you take them out of the canner, tighten them down tight. And then what I'll do is I'll let them set overnight until they're cooled down. You want to let them set overnight or 24 hours, whatever. Then I take the rings off, check to make sure they're sealed, wash the jars and lids, and down in the pantry they go. My pantry's in the basement, so it's in a cool, dark place. And if the meat would last that long, but it doesn't, it'll last for many years, much longer than anything you can buy in the grocery store. But yes, I do date everything. So anyway, that's how I can my meat and dry beans. And we'll be using this when we travel. Okay, talk to you later. I'll try to get this uploaded in the next day or two. Good morning, guys. It's the next morning, very early. I've been up since about 3.30. Anyway, I'm going to get this video uploaded. As I was previewing it, I was kind of laughing because I thought this is the kind of senior citizen video that Blind Views talks about is bobbing camera, making you dizzy, scooping around, zooming in. But, oh well, that's, that's me. Anyway, I wanted to show you next morning what I do. I haven't washed my jars yet, but you take the lids off, and I've already loosened them. This is the one metal lid that I used. You can, I usually just tap on it. I can tell by the sound whether it's sealed, but when you bring them out of the canner, usually you'll hear ting, ting, ting with the metal caps. The Tatler lids, the way that you tell they're sealed, is you pick them up by the lid. And if this, they've got a good seal, it won't come off. So, I know I've got a good seal on my Tatlers. Some people say they can see where it's indented. I've never been able to tell. But anyway, next thing I'm going to do is wash those jars, put a date on them, what's in them. 
and um, get them put down in the pantry. And like I said, this is the meat and the beans that we will take as we are traveling. And when I said it doesn't last long, I meant it doesn't stay on the pantry long because we eat it very quickly. So um, hope you learned a little bit about this. And remember, this is my way. I'm by no means a professional at what I do. So I'm not advocating anybody do it my way. I just wanted to share with you. Oh, here's my little experiment on beans. That's my little... Uh, what did I just call that? Half pint. So that's a quarter cup of dry beans and a jar of water. And all I have to do is dump them out and they're ready to eat. Just as a side note, that cooks the beans when they're being processed. It also cooks the meat. Um, a lot of people like to... Now I've never had the cold corned beef. I don't know. It might be okay. Oh. See that on top, guys? You can kind of see the, the ring. They, yes, that's the fat off of the meat. Yes, it's in a can when you buy canned meat. But literally, I just scoop that fat out. And it, it's usually just around the edge of the jar. And you can just peel it out and throw it away. So, I'll get this uploaded. Thanks for watching.